We're in the Flint Creek Range of Montana looking for a place to camp. And we just walked up this road because it looks perfect up there. We don't drive up until we, you know, especially a little two track like this. It's beautiful up there and it would be perfect except for one thing, no place to turn around when you get up there. So we're gonna continue on up the mountain here and uh, look for a place to camp. We're trying to stay where it's cool and, and where there's- Not very busy. And not busy at all. Let's yeah. go look. Well, just because you're on a beautiful forest road going back into National Forest doesn't mean you're gonna find a place to stop for the night. Sometimes you're lucky just to find a place to turn around. Well, we've been coming up this road here for several miles and we found this one little road here kind of growing up in the middle. And there's the only signs we see of anybody up here is woodcutters. I'm just gonna walk up in here and see if there's a level spot to camp. So far I don't see it, but we'll check it out. No, it's all really hilly and sloped and rocky and stumpy and no place to turn around once again. Possibly there to turn around, but no place to camp, no place to park the trailer. We'll keep looking. And that's what it's like when you're trying to find those really cool camping places. <laughs> you just gotta poke around, keep looking. Well, up at the end, there's a turnaround. There is one vehicle here. Looks like you can hike from here. A couple of roads that lead off one way and the other way. I'm walking one of them right now. Looks pretty rough, looks too rough real rough and narrow. I don't mind going up something like this for a short distance if there's a camp spot like real close. But this goes up the mountain. I know you can't tell from looking at this, but it's steep. Here's one area here that might work. Check it out. It's got quite a slope to it this way. Yeah, solar looks doubtful. <laughs> and there's another road over here. Road or a trail, I don't know what. Check it out. There's a hiking trail there. And this really bad rocky road comes down to here. Oh, and there's a stream. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a Ford. So if you got a Jeep or an ATV, now from a distance I thought this might be a camp spot right here, but it's not, it's a, it's a road. And it's got a really bad drop off right here of about 18 inches, it just goes down. So I wouldn't be able to get my trailer down that. Otherwise I'd be game to try it. There's probably good camping on the other side. Well, it looks like we're kind of skunked here. This is the second road we've driven up this afternoon. We're gonna to have to go find another one. The first road we drove up was the Forest Service Road up to Storm Lake. And man, it was just one car after another, one truck, excuse me, after another. Really narrow road, just a little two track. And, and it was just one vehicle after another. We finally got to a spot where we could turn around because we knew that it was just gonna be uh, going crazy up there. Uh, and it was just one car after another going up and down. Storm Lake must be a nice place. We saw a lot of people with canoes and paddle boards and things like that on top of their uh, rigs. So that's probably what's up there. Goes up to over 9,000 feet and it's right on the Continental Divide. Definitely just a summertime thing if you ever decide to do it. Well, we found this place. It's uh, not too high up the mountain. We were hoping to be high up so it'd be cooler. And it's just a big pull out off the road, but the road hardly gets any traffic at all. There's nothing up there. We were just up to the top and back. <laughs> so there's just two homes or two log cabins way up in there and that's about it. There's this stand of trees between us and the dirt road too, giving us a little privacy. It'll do. 
especially just for the night. Well, this is actually a great camping spot. It's level, it's got good solar, and uh, it even has a shady spot to sit in the afternoon here because uh, it's gonna get a little warm. Well, good morning, Linda. What are you looking at? <laughs> There's a little uh, lavender butterfly <laughs> or moth, one or the other. <laughs> Don't go chasing butterfly. <laughs> what was that stupid song from? Uh, isn't that a uh, Paul McCartney on one oh. of his uh, first solo album? Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that album. We had that album. <laughs> not, not that we're Paul McCartney fans. We were in. It was American Wings, wasn't it? Yeah, we were in American Samoa and we decided to buy some music for our boat. And he was one of the people that we recognized. Those were cassettes, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that when we were getting close to Samoa, um, we, were, we started picking up the Pongo Pongo uh, radio station and they were playing that song on the radio. And that's why we bought that's the album. That's why we bought it. Yeah. And I bought Dire Straits. Which was great. Yes. Yeah, that was their first album. Hey, how'd you sleep? Slept really well. Um, it was real comfortable. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. I know, it was nice. But it was just right at. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it was a very peaceful night. Good. Yeah, this is me too. I slept like a log. It wasn't too hot. The only thing is, I think that was Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls, wasn't it? Don't go chasing. Yeah, but we've always <laughs> said butterflies. <Why? laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we did have a very nice overnight stay here. Uh, you know, and I was thinking this morning, uh, we drove up to the top of this road, like I showed you, and you saw where the stream stopped us. So many people, though, camp in 4 by 4s Jeep Wranglers and Rubicons, and, and they might have a rooftop tent, or they might just sleep in their outfit. Uh, single travelers, they would have gone through there and been able to gone on all the way up to the top. So what kind of outfit you drive really makes a difference when you're looking for a spot to camp. The bigger your RV, the more limited you are on where you can camp, especially if you're into dispersed camping like we are. Which brings up another thing. The young people I see today, young uh, solo and sometimes couples, nomads, that buy these uh, expensive sprinter vans. I know why they do it. I mean, they are comfortable, but they tend to be really low to the ground unless you get the, have buy this super expensive four by four ones that are higher up, but super expensive even in a two wheel drive. And I know why they do it. It's because you can walk into a dealership and buy them with very little money down and a big monthly nut to crack after that. But that's not what this channel is about, is it? This channel is about doing it simply and economically. So my suggestion to people is to still look for older work vans, just the regular old GM or Chevy Econoline vans, things like that, preferably a high top. But let's say you buy one of those and it's got a lot of miles on it. Well, for a lot less money than you'd pay on a Sprinter van, you could take that old van and have the engine and transmission rebuilt, put new tires on it, and even put a high top on it if you want for a lot less money and be able to go a lot more places because they got a little more ground clearance. Uh, most of the places that we travel, uh, you can go with just two wheel drive, but bring along, make sure you've got traction boards or something like that if you are just two wheel drive, just in case you do get stuck. But do it simply, do it cheaply, and do it. If you've been following this channel, you know that Linda and I started out very simply with this trailer. It just had fold-up cots in it, didn't even have a countertop in it. I remember, of course, we insulated it, put in the windows and all that, but uh, I remember doing the video on the fold-up table inside and just things. And we've added things. We didn't have solar at first. Now we've got lots of solar, little by little, but we didn't do it all at once. We just did it one bite at a time. Now we travel pretty darn comfortably. And that brings up this review update. One of the best upgrades that we've done to our trailer 
is the Ogle toilet. And we, we've done, done it all. We've had the sawdust bucket system. We've had wag bags. We've gone in little tiny plastic bags and tied them up. And we've gone in the bushes. Um, but believe me, after going through all of those, this is like, I, I, I don't know why we went through all the other stuff before. It is, it is so, um, easy, comfortable. There's no smell. There's no ill factor. So anyway, this is one of the best upgrades you can ever do. I think. So if I was just starting out and I had a list of things I wanted to get for my van or my trailer or my RV, you know, where you have solar and all that. This would be at the top of the list right there. Maybe even ahead of solar because you can always get solar later. This is uh, the best thing you can get, I think. <laughs> this is how we carry the peat moss. We just divvy it up into uh, big freezer bags, one gallon freezer bags like this. On a six week trip, we take six of these. That's it, they just stow under my bunk. You can also use coconut core, but it's a little harder to get. I encourage you to watch the original uh, review I did on this. I'll put a link to that video down below in the video description here. So as for a review item, that toilet is the one we feel most strongly about. We Just like our credit card, we never leave home without it. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Dean and Barb. I'm sorry if I don't get your names right, but they're at the um, Aho Farmer's Market. Thank you for the vase, because I use it all the time and Look at those pretty flowers. Thank you. Well, we're just now coming into the town of Anaconda, Montana. Um, sorry, it's cloudy and sorry my windshield's so dirty, but Linda and I have been driving around on forest roads for the last few days, so kind of buggy. We're coming in from the west side. Homes with neat yards. Now up on the hill ahead of us, you can see a giant smokestack. And let me tell you, it is huge because Anaconda is a mining town, copper mining. But the thing about Anaconda is when the mine closed down, the town survived. Uh, not very well for a while, but it did survive. And now it looks like it's thriving. One unusual feature about Anaconda is it has two main streets. One runs west to east and the other is one way east to west. When Linda and I first came here many years ago, this place was dead. And it looked like a deserted mining town, kinda. You know, there, was, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't anything going on here. Now the town is looking a lot more vibrant. See the planter boxes full of flowers? There's a lot of people moving here, I think, just because it's a nice place to live. It's just west of Butte by about oh, a 20 minute drive. Boy, there's a lot of neat old stoves back in here and other things. Look at that Model A truck. Well, I was going to take you into the uh, fur center here because it's there's hardly any of those type of stores around. There used to be one where we live, but they buy and sell furs. But it's a good place to go when you need leather. And I've bought leather from them before. I was going to take you in there, but it's Sunday and they're closed. Oh, Black Dog Antiques. Look at the old pickup trucks there. Nice. And now we're heading west. Um, this would be a very nice place to live. Uh, quiet, more, um, more of an old time style of living, I think. A lot of places where you could live out in the country here. This well, is high elevation though, yeah, Linda? Yeah, pretty, kind of high. It's um, more rural living, but with um, bigger town amenities, I think. 
Still got all the old buildings, and they're still being used, too. There's the museum on the left. There's the ye old family dollar store. It's getting trendy. <laughs> Elevation-wise, it's 5,300 feet. That's not too bad. Winters here would be cold and dry. This is Main Street. It runs north and south. That was the commercial drag we were just going up and down back there. Beautiful park on the right side. Now people like to come to Montana because they love the little towns, they love the scenery, and they like the people. But if you do decide to move here, don't, don't try to change it. If you're moving from some other state that's a little bit, uh, I won't say, but you're coming here because you like it, don't change it. If you go out and visit a bar here in this town on Friday night, the place will be jumping. If you go out to the same bar on Saturday night, it'll be empty because folks go to church on Sundays. See the deer crossing the street here? It's not using a crosswalk. <laughs> but that happens in small towns. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's the county building right there, Deer Lodge County. There's another one. The Owl Bar. Linda and I are noticing, just driving through the neighborhoods, we're seeing all the neighborhood bars that would be left over from the uh, mining days. You know, hardworking individuals stop at their neighborhood bar for a beer before they go home, or two. Yeah, and those hardworking guys, they needed, uh, you know, it was a nice thing to look forward to after a long day. Yeah, I'll bet. If it wasn't so early in the day, I'd like to stop in and have a beer. Sign said, Anaconda Stack State Park. What is this? I think that's a giant ore bucket. Holy it is. Holy. Huge. Huge. Look, they used it until the bottom actually wore out to the bottom was really thin and it cracked. It's all worn out down through there. It's a cast iron bucket. Can make a lot of chili in there. <laughs> so how did something this huge get transported? It was probably on a huge crane or something. It's got feet on the bottom like one gigantic Dutch oven. Maybe it was used in the smeltering process. I don't know. That is one huge stack up on top of the hill. Well, at least this stack is being preserved. The stack in the town where we live was, uh, it was one of the tallest stacks in the nation, but it was demolished in 1997. Well, the copper came from Butte and the smelter roasted the, the good ore after they separated the bad stuff from the good stuff. They roast, roasted the, uh, the ore and got the copper out. So Anaconda isn't a mining town, it's a smelt, it was a smelter town. I, I guess maybe in the early days there was a mine here, but that's what that smelter is for. At first, there were many stacks over here, but then they piped them in, they funneled them all into one giant stack. So there was only one stack and it's 585 feet tall. Oh, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's one of those giant smelting pots that I was pointing out earlier, and it was full of molten ore and pouring it into here. One big Dutch oven. Hmm. I'm going to hang out with this guy because I want to see what's in his lunchbox. <laughs> Well, I think this is a nice place to end this video. Yeah. 
Yeah, we enjoyed our little tour here of Anaconda. It's just a place you don't get to very often, but it is a nice little town. And hope you guys enjoyed the camping too. If you did, we need you to subscribe and people are getting unsubscribed from this channel. We noticed that only about 12% of our viewers are actually subscribers. So if you'd please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, because other people say, um, where have oh, you been? Where have you been? We haven't seen your videos in a year. We put out a video every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happened is, is, is they didn't subscribe, and then they, when they're watching the videos regularly, uh, YouTube keeps suggesting them to them regularly. But if you skip one or two videos, YouTube doesn't suggest them anymore unless you hit the notification bell. If you would do that, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. See you around. <laughs>